And women don't love their fathers. Yes, they do. They That's yearn an, an for their absurd, father, but they don't love their father. That is an absurd <laughs> saying. That, no, where do you truth. come with that? All women hate all men. You're getting into your inflammatory so statements crazy. again. No, it's true. What's up, everybody? And welcome to a new video on my channel and uh, new hair just in time for Halloween. It's spooky. Speaking of spooky things, <laughs> we're going to be talking about Jesse Lee Peterson. Now, this is part two of me talking about the Paula Morgan versus Jesse Lee Peterson saga. I made my last video, so if you want to catch up, I'll leave that link in the description below. Um, but basically, I challenged Paula and Morgan to talk about some of Jesse Lee Peterson's viewpoints regarding that video he made with his expert men talking about how women should not be educated. <laughs> they shouldn't be able to vote and they should not go to school. That's bad. Paul and Morgan, to my surprise, accepted that challenge. Maybe it's because we were on slightly better terms after having had dinner together. That's a whole story. I told it in my last video. We're probably going to hang out again. But regardless of their reasoning, they rose to the challenge and absolutely crushed their response to Jesse Lee Peterson. There was fire. There was sass in the way that they combated his viewpoints. And I was very, I was left feeling very, very impressed, which I did not think I would ever feel about a Paula Morgan video. But I was like, yes, the whole time. But even more unexpected than that, was the fact that Jesse Lee Peterson saw that, reached out to them and invited them on his show and they accepted. So that is what we are going to be reviewing in this video, the debate between Paul and Morgan and Jesse Lee Peterson. Oh my goodness, I never thought those words would come out of my mouth. Here we are. And wherever women take over, hell would come to the forefront. I rest my case. <laughs> So pop your popcorn, get ready. This actually gets pretty intense. And I have to say, before even getting into this, I have to say, I'm, I'm a little upset with Paul and Morgan. You know, because of you guys, I had to sit through and edit out clips of Jesse Lee Peterson, which meant I had to watch him for hours, hours longer than any person should ever have to without losing their mind. <laughs> It's whatever at this point. But before we get into it, I do want to thank Cerebral for sponsoring this video. So, so many people struggle with mental health issues, but cost, convenience, and fear of judgment prevent a lot of people from actually seeking quality mental health treatment. Cerebral is a mental health subscription that provides clients with ongoing comprehensive access to online care and medication management for insomnia, anxiety, depression, and ADHD in certain states for one flat monthly rate. Cerebral also takes a one-stop shop approach to mental health care they provide their clients with both evidence-based therapeutic techniques and medication management, as the combination of both types of care has been shown to have the greatest benefits. And Cerebral operates in a telemedicine model, meaning you can schedule your video or phone visits with your provider, therapist, or care counselor when it's most convenient for you. And what I really love is depending on where you live, you can see a provider within 20 minutes with their instant live visits. And if you're like me and you need to talk to somebody fast, that can be really, really helpful. And it's affordable. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars to talk to a psychiatrist or even just to get a therapy session, Cerebro really does offer more affordable price options. Here are the three different plan options. You can do medication and care counseling, you can do medication and therapy, and you can just do therapy. Some fun stats, 95% of people who sign up can see a provider within three days, so that's fast. You don't have to schedule months away to see someone. After 60 days of use, 82% of people reported back with lower anxiety levels and 51% less depressed. So make sure you click the link down in the description to get started with Cerebro, and that'll give you access to quality mental health treatment for as low as $30 for your first month, so click it. You guys know I'm a big advocate for mental health. I don't think enough people talk about it, so please make sure you consider that, and after this video, you might need it. Grab that popcorn. I said to pop popcorn earlier. Did you listen to me? Grab your popcorn, grab your drinks, and uh, let's, let's go. A couple weeks ago, my experts and I had a discussion about women who vote. Yeah, it was a massive, a massive mistake to uh, educate women. I noticed that everything that women get involved with, it turned to hell. Ah, oh, yes, my favorite, the experts. And we said that one of the worst mistakes that America made is to allow women to vote. I mean, to be educated, and that an educated woman would never make for a good wife or mother. So those are the major statements that obviously Paul and Morgan were looking to debate him on because that is the premise of the video that they reacted to, and this is this this is going to get pretty heated. You just you just wait. Paul and Morgan, they are a married couple. They are Christians, 
and they saw that video and they commented on it. And I was glad to see that. And I asked them to come on the show today and let's have a little discussion about it. Well, this little discussion went on for like an hour and a half almost. So I really, like, I really did my best to try to watch it, which was very painful, and narrow it down to the points that I thought would be good to react to. I didn't do that great of a job at narrowing it down. Therefore, this video is probably going to be very long. I apologize in advance. Thank you guys for coming on. Jesse, how are you, my friend? We're oh, glad to be here. Thank you, Paul and Morgan. So right away, Jesse Lee Peterson starts asking overly personal questions. But before he gets into those, he asks them just a general, why do you consider yourself a Christian? Yeah, recognizing that he gave his life for me. Jesse, real, real quick, let me, let me, if you don't mind, because I've been watching a few of your interviews to prep for this. Yes. And you do, you do a really good job of asking good questions and you kind of you get people on the spot is it okay if i throw some questions your way i want you process? guys to absolutely oh paul's coming in prepared and i'm glad that they did i whenever i went on jesse's show i really didn't know very much about him there wasn't a lot about him available online at that point i think i was like one of the very early people to go on his show and I was so caught off guard in the moment, and it was a little bit overwhelming, so I'm really glad that at least Paul and Morgan were able to gauge a little bit uh, what they were getting themselves into, the type of questioning that Jesse Lee Peterson will, will start doing to them, just the same as he did to me. So I'm glad he prepared, and he's kind of going in uh, on offense, which I, I like it. <laughs> do, you, do you mind answering that, just so I can get a better grid of where you're at? How do you know you're a Christian? Um, because God changed my heart from hate to love. So what do you, what do you respond when someone watches your show and says, man, it just feels like you're leaning really heavily more on the negative hate stuff? I, I understand that it's a blind person who cannot see. <laughs> so this is kind of the theme throughout all of Jesse's answers. He admits zero fault ever for anything. And if someone has a criticism of him, they're blind. They just cannot see. The error is in everyone else but me. I could never do anything or say anything wrong. So then Paul proceeds to be like overly nice to Jesse Lee Peterson for a while. I'm just gonna kind of skip through that. He said someone called in and I really didn't agree with that caller. He's kind of creating a little bit of a, a soft landing for Jesse so that whenever he asks this next question, it doesn't come off as too abrasive. And you know, this is normal at the beginning of, of things like this to try to start off being really nice before Jesse wears down the very last fiber of your patience and gets to the core of what makes you tick, which well, we'll get there. But for now, the niceties continue. You're saying stuff that's so inflammatory and so uh, sometimes we're just like our jaws are on the floor. <laughs> so you do have people in our camp that aren't like this guy that called in, but that are just like, this guy is such an extremist. So I'm, I don't know. I, I, I know you know this, but I don't know that. I don't know that. Of course he doesn't, because that would be admitting that some of his own views are a little bit out there. And he thinks that, you know, is not the case. Everything that he says is perfectly normal, not inflammatory or possibly wrong, God forbid, in any way. Um, you do. <laughs> give me an example of an inflammatory and or extremist. We can do it. Uh, something like that you said? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Morgan's like, well, how do I choose just one? I mean, honestly, there are so many extreme things that Jesse Lee Peterson has said that she really has her pick. But I think that we're going to probably stick to the women's issues on this one. Everything a woman touches turns to hell. Right. <laughs> and I quote. Can you give me an, and I'm sticking to that because it's so true. When men are not there to guide women in how to raise their children, the children end up becoming drug addicts and angry, immoral, uh, emotional, uh, uh, depressed. They have no peace because women don't know how to raise children. You know, I feel like 
like I've talked about Jesse Lee Peterson enough to just not be surprised by the crazy things that he says. It's not shocking to me that he believes a woman raising kids is inferior to a man. It's not that he thinks that kids do better with a mother and father present. That's not what he's saying. He's just saying women need men to like guide them. It's not that kids need both parents or anything like that that would be less inflammatory. It's just that women are from the devil, you know, so obviously. Uh, were you able to catch any of our video from a week and a half ago? The one where you commented on the, the discussion that my experts and I had. You yes, got to admit, I have some of the smartest experts on this side of heaven, right? <laughs> They're really something. They're something There's for something. sure. There's something. We'll say that. <laughs> something for sure. And I really wonder what qualifications do these men have that make them experts in the eyes of Jesse Lee Peterson? I mean, they're expert douchebags. I will give them that. But again, let's go back to the statement. And hopefully you'd realize this. And I was trying to give you some credit in our video, but like everything a woman touches turns to hell. Yeah. Can we like at least narrow that and clarify that a little bit? Oh, okay. All things that women touches turn to dust. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is trying so hard to be cordial. Let's try to let's try to specify and narrow that down. Like when you say all women turn things to hell, could you be more clear? Yes, Paul, all things women touch turns to hell, turns to dust. D does that make it more clear? I'm just gonna say the same thing, but hopefully that clarified. They took out God, they brought in homosexuality, lesbian, they hate men. Uh, there's violence in the schools now. We have to have security guards and police yes all, all of this is because of women this is because of women becoming teachers and being more involved in the education system that's why we have violence in schools because of the women that are so violent now they're urging in everything that's evil and getting rid of the things that are good they hate men they hate god they're bringing in illegal aliens they are pushing the so-called same-sex marriage and now they're accusing white people of being racist and oh there's so much to unpack there women are there is a secret group of women that just help illegal aliens hide in america it's just a, a woman thing we like to do that and of course lgbt rights are all credited to to women because there are no gay men there are, are no relationships that are two men. And if there are, that's definitely the fault of a woman. Somehow. It just makes sense. If you don't think about it, it makes sense. You disagree. I disagree. What with have I said one. that you disagree with about, uh, in, in those statements? Fucking <laughs> everything? What? To say that all things women touch turns to hell, I just feel like is a very drastic statement. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty drastic and she's putting it very nicely. She's, she's being very mild right now. And uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll let this progress. I think whether women or men were in charge because we live in a fallen world, uh, schools are gonna become further and further away from God, in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna turn my atheist brain off for a second and step away from the religious side of this argument and say, obviously the point Morgan's trying to make is that yeah, there are going to be problems in general, in the world, in society, but that's not because of women, that's because society has issues. The further we get away from God as a country, as a whole. But it wouldn't um, do that if men were in charge. And the reason for that is that God above is the man's God and the God below is the woman's God. Yeah, you know, it's just so hard to think ever of a time in history where a man in charge didn't lead to a lot of problems. I'll let that just sit with you guys for a second. Also, what was that about the devil being the woman's God? God above is the man's God and the God below is the woman's God. So, the God that they believe in, you know, the, the good guy, right, up there in the sky is for the men. And and the devil with horns down below, that's that's the woman, that's the woman thing. Right. I don't know where he gets that. I don't I don't know. I joke. But it is a horribly sexist thing to say that. Like, dear God that I don't believe in. I feel bad for Christians that actually listen to this guy. All the women that are just like self-hating women that are like, yes, I am evil. My husband is, is the good guy and I'm from the bad guy and, you know, I should just hate myself for the rest of eternity because of it. I wonder, actually, on that note, I wonder if Jesse Lee Peterson thinks women can get into heaven, 
right? If, if you're so from the devil and, and you're so evil in your nature, like he, you'll, you'll see when we get into it, but he doesn't think women even have the capacity to love. He views women as just like a very, very low, low life form. So I wonder if he believes that women can even be in heaven. It's an interesting question. If you guys have ever heard him answer that, leave a comment below and let me know. When you and say so, man in charge, are you referring to Christian men being in charge or just any man? Well, nowadays, men are totally like women, so I can't say any man. Because they're beta. Well, what about men of history that uh, things have gone up in flames that have seemed to embody, as you would say, alpha, uh, <laughs> alpha male characteristics, and you see their kingdoms crumbling? Thank you, Paul. Thank you. That is the point that I was trying to make. You did it beautifully. This is a very weird feeling. These last couple of videos have been very interesting. Very interesting shift in the the way that I feel towards Paul and Morgan. They're killing it right now. Not by alpha men. When those things happened, they were, they were controlled by beta males. Men who had the nature of the woman. <laughs> Oh my God, he has a, he's a st stupid answer, but he has an answer for everything. Any time in history, <laughs> any time a man did something bad or that just went to hell, as he likes to say, it's because the man was just acting like a woman. Duh. They had not been born of the father yet. So they had the woman's nature. So they s see life with an illogical, they saw life as with an illogical mindset and not a logical mindset. A lot of these men that actually come to mind were self-acclaimed Christians at least. Um, but what he's trying to say, and he repeats this a lot through the video, is that everyone is of the woman when they are born, right? Because you, you are coming out of the body of a woman, therefore you are of the woman and a woman is a sinner and because she's from the devil, whatever. You're born into sin because you're of the woman and then Nothing to do with the, the, the guy and the relationship, right? Like it takes, they both made the baby. Nothing about the guy, um, but then you're of the father, like the God the father, whenever you are saved or whatever. So then you can become good whenever you are of the father, but the mother, the woman who has the baby, bad, right? Because she's from Satan. It's, it's very, very weird the way he thinks, but we all knew that already. But I just wanted to clarify where he gets that from in case, you know, as he talks later on through this video, you kind of understand. It doesn't make sense, but at least you understand the way that it doesn't make sense. Because of the nature of the woman, Satan being her daddy, her nature is wicked. Mm, yeah, Satan's my daddy. And so that's why men and women must be born of the father so they can overcome the wicked nature and have the perfect nature of the father. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. That's kind of a scary sound. I feel like anytime I need to make a point in the future, I just need to save that video clip and just uh huh. Every time, just the, that's the that's the verbalization of the light bulb going off in Jesse Lee Peterson, or he thinks he just said something amazing. Uh huh. <laughs> Morgan, let me ask: Do you is uh, Paul the head of you? Yes, he is. And do you obey him? I do my best. I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> do you obey him? Uh, yes, I try. <laughs> do you obey him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many times does a girl have to answer the question for you to stop asking the question? Like, I just got, I just felt so uncomfortable. I'm not even in the room with them, but I feel like I'm sitting in the room just like slowly fading back into my chair out of just awkward tension. And if three times wasn't enough, let's go again. Do you yeah. obey him, Morgan? Yes, I do. You do? And yep. how does he deal with the hell in you when it comes out? How does Paul handle that? Oh my God. <sighs> Ah, there are just no words. Let's just keep going. Paul, do you still sin? Yeah, yeah. And real quick, I appreciate you bringing me into it because I was going to ask, like, you say when the hell comes out, how does Paul handle it? Right. What about, I mean, so you would also say that goes both ways. What about when the hell comes out of the man? Paul, 
Bless you, Paul. I appreciate this. He's standing up for his woman. He's saying, "Hey, you know, this is a this is a widely held belief by by Christians, not by Jesse Lee Peterson apparently, but most Christians will say that they are sinners. And like, you know, even me as somebody who is not religious, I'll say every person has flaws. It's basically the same sentiment, but a different way of saying it, right? Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But Jesse was just going so hard on Morgan, saying like that this hell comes out of her, which. I kind of glossed over her her response. Her response was very nice, saying, you know, well, whenever I'm not perfect, Paul is very understanding and compassionate and all these nice things, which, you know, that that's great. But Paul was like, well, let me bring it back to me. I'm also not perfect. I'm also a sinner. So it should equally be asked of me how she deals with my hellfire, right? And the Christian man, how does she... Well, up with that, I right? didn't. I didn't think that you said you were born with. You were, uh, believed in Jesus, right? Yes. So I didn't think you had hell coming out of you. You still have hell coming out of you. But, but she. But I said I believe she in, believes Jesus. in Jesus. Don't matter. You're a woman. Right. Where's the difference? But uh, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, make sure <laughs> I you want to hear it. Right. Don't you skirt around this. I won't at all. But I want to get this. Out. Are you saying that? Even though you believe in Jesus, you still have hell coming out of you? Hell is a strong word that you <laughs> used. <laughs> yeah, he's basically going to say nobody's perfect. But I really do hope that they come back around to that question because I am I'm interested to hear his response. There are definitely times, man, when I slip into some selfishness and I end up having to repent for it. Yeah. And so how is it possible to be born of God and still have hell in you? So Jesse Lee Peterson truly thinks that once you're, I mean, of course you have to be a man, that's the prerequisite, but once you are a Christian, I guess, and you become of the father because you're a Christian, that you can do no wrong. He literally thinks that you're infallible at that point. Like you are the Pope. I, I guess you're, I'm assuming you're saying that once you get saved and born again, you're immediately perfectly Christ-like. Absolutely. You made perfect at the twinkling of an eye. Oh, okay. Um, this is not a, a sentiment I've ever heard said by Christians before. I, I mean, I was raised, I mean, obviously it's Christian, but I was raised Catholic. So there are some differences and weirdness in there. Um, but literally Catholic guilt is a thing. I felt like every mass, they just tried to beat into us over and over again how bad we were how unworthy we were like that was that was a theme like you better go home and hate yourself after this i know that's not everybody that's just my experience with catholicism so seeing jesse lee peterson with this take is just really really very strange for me to witness yeah so you, between you have them, not I, you have not sinned or even struggled with sin since you were born again once i was born of god i've not sinned it's impossible to sin if you're born of god uh, i don't think literally anybody would agree with him on that christians included let me know if i'm wrong in the comments is this like is there like a weird group of, of christians that think this way or is it just him and maybe his experts i don't know that's the weird group it's just them <laughs> i want to go back to the question about if i thought uh morgan you asked well, what did you ask me about her and i didn't want to leave that out yeah well and i and the reason oh I asked about her because... the hell that's in her okay yes the hell that is in morgan I really, God, if he thinks that about her, what has he got to think about me? I, I mean, that's, <laughs> that would be interesting. Would you say that, Paul, I don't think you're saved because you've sinned since you were born again? I, I, I say, Paul, you cannot sin if you're truly born of the Father. It's impossible because in his nature, there is no sin. So it's not that he thinks he's just so good that he hasn't made a mistake. I haven't slipped up since I've been saved. It's that... I can't. I literally am infallible. I can do no wrong. Can you give me an example of sin without being all perverted or anything? Well, this one time I was watching, it is funny that that's where his brain goes, that like, if you confess a sin, it has to be perverted. Like, what is this man suppressing in himself? I hope he's okay. So Morgan gives a really beautiful answer about how, how you know, she just leans on God to help her through tough times. And that's, you know, whatever gets people through. I do not judge whatever gets people through. And um, it just, Jesse Lee Peterson is very interesting in how 
kind of reminiscent on the did you have fun where we were getting really heated and he just kind of cut me off with something totally unrelated. Oh, homosexuality was. No, I never thought that opinion. actually, ever. Yeah. Did you have fun? Doing what? This. He does this to Morgan. She's giving this like heartfelt response about, you know, things she struggled with. And then he just kind of cuts her off with something random out of the blue that just kind of makes you go like, your brain has to take a second to process the nonsense. Lean on him for my strength. Have you forgiven your mother? For what? For imposing her will upon you. Oh, her face, it says it all. I feel you. I feel you, Morgan. I remember how, how I felt whenever I was sitting next to Jesse Lee Peterson and he was asking me these questions. He was really personal with me and really trying to pry into my family history as well. <laughs> for raising me the way she wanted to raise me. Right. <laughs> Um, uh, the, my mom is an amazing woman of God, and oh she was Lord, not... those are the worst ones. Why would any Christian say that? You know, you would think that he would, you know, assume someone like me would be way worse than a woman who says she was like of God. She loved me um, deeply and laid her life down for her children. Her mom was a good woman. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, there is, is buddy. Oh. And so no such thing. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Also, thank you, Paul, for sticking up for, for Morgan. I like that. I like the protective element that you are kind of exhibiting throughout this video. It makes me feel good. I like to see, you know, a woman have her man stick up for her like that. Like right now, he has a smile on his face, but I think deep down, he is, he's starting to get a little mad. He mad. Um, have you forgiven her, Morgan? I've forgiven her for her mess ups, but yeah. every mom messes up. Hey, so. hey, hey, Did pause real quick. Her to Jesse, Jesse, I was like racking my brain just real quick, going back to this sin argument. I appreciate this too. I feel like in, in his own way right now, he's also protecting her again because he's trying to just like, all right, Jesse, you're like, you're like a baby. I'm going to wave, wave this shiny thing in front of your face and try to distract you from being extremely inappropriate with your line of questioning with my wife. Um, I, I do like that he's trying to divert and change the topic. And Morgan, I feel you, the uncomfortable feelings that must have been just raging inside of you at this moment. I relate, like he asked me questions very similar to this about my parents, if I was close with my parents, if I had forgiven them for their mistakes. And I think I basically gave the same response, like nobody's perfect. And I remember looking back on my experience with him and watching that video and being a little disappointed in myself that I even entertained answering some of those questions and feeling the need to justify myself. Like in retrospect, I wish I had just shut it down. I know at the time I was really trying to be on my best behavior because it was important to me to portray someone who was, you know, the face of atheism for that particular episode. I wanted to portray um, a kindness and understanding that I didn't think his audience would be expecting. I thought I was going on his show. I didn't know that I'd get to post it on my channel. So in my head, no one was going to see it except for Christians and not just Christians. Christians that enjoy watching Jesse Lee Peterson, right? So I was just on my utmost best behavior. So I entertained a lot of these overly personal questions and I, I regret it a little bit that I didn't put my foot down. So I hope that if you feel a similar regret and not kind of just cutting off the conversation and being like, this is a no-go zone, don't be too hard on yourself. I did the same thing. It's very difficult when you're trying to be agreeable and put a smile on your face and have uh, a positive conversation with someone who just pretty much makes it impossible to do that. So don't be too hard on yourself, girl, you did good. No one who is born of God can sin again. So I, I hear you, man. Like, okay, well, th again, there, this could be debated and, and should be debated. So it's not enough. up for debate. It's not up for debate, Paul. You can try to move away from this in the kindest way possible, but it don't matter because what Jesse Lee Peterson says is canon. Morgan, in your response, you said that you call us, or at least me, uh, misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> when did I say I, that is misogynist? I feel like he struggled to pronounce that word, so I guess if I'm going to give him credit for anything, it'll be that. He, he did it. 
when I listen to y'all's video, as a woman who walks with the Lord, who wants to submit to her husband, I heard four men who it sounded like you guys literally hate women. Like that's what it was. And I was trying. I really, really <laughs> am trying to hear what you guys are saying. She's absolutely right. Those four men, 100% have a hatred in their heart for women. I don't know where it came from or what they went through with a woman that made them the way that they are, but they absolutely despise women and they are the most disrespectful, misogynistic bunch I've ever seen. You are not wrong in labeling them as such. See, what it is, Satan is the woman's God and the woman is the man God. And so it's easier for men to overcome the, the female God than it is for the woman to overcome Satan because she has his nature. Morgan's face during him saying this is just that's chef's kiss. And so, why does Satan? Why does woman have Satan's nature and not men have Satan's nature? Because the woman listened to Satan and he became her god, and the, the man the listened. Woman felt the man listened to the woman and and she became his god. So basically, he's saying because. Eve took the temptation of the snake and ate the fruit, and then Adam followed her lead that she is basically worse, and he's just uh, her victim. She's not a victim of temptation. She is the perpetrator of temptation, and the man is the victim. That's just how it is. Men can do no wrong, you see. You look at the redemption story, Jesus said, for all have sinned. He lumps us all together. They don't continue to make these distinctions of woman is much worse than men because blah, blah, blah. You see, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that it's all encompassing. All of sin and all need Jesus. And once we have Jesus, we're set free. I feel like, you know, for Paul, I feel like he did his best job just then. I don't think anybody who was religious could have done it better at trying to explain this to Jesse Lee Peterson, but that um, didn't get him anywhere. I don't think Jesse Lee Peterson can truly hear something and like process it and try to understand. He just kind of keeps with his own narrative no matter what you say. When uh, Eve listened to Satan, did Satan become her God? You, no. word, you word things in a way that's like... When Eve listened to Satan, Satan did not become her God. No, I disagree uh, with what you. Did he, what did he become to her? He was a temptation to her that she fell into. What uh, did she <laughs> fall? <laughs> but actually here, I think Morgan does a pretty good job at responding. But it, like I said, it doesn't matter. You can give the perfect response. It, it's just not going to get in there. What? No. I, I think that, and I agree with Paul and Morgan, I actually watched their response to this because they felt I need to do a recap and I did the same thing whenever I did my debate with him. And they said that they saw his response to this going, what the, as like a, kind of like a cop out, like she made a good point and he didn't know how to respond to it. So he just tried to make it seem like what she said was so crazy by saying, what the, because she made a good point. I know. A woman. What the? Uh... And again, that's a soundbite I might want to use in the future whenever someone says something ridiculous. I'm just going to save that clip and insert a little. Yeah. yeah. But what gets dangerous is when you belittle women so much and you How ignore you the portions. How you by telling the truth? You ignore the portions of scripture that elevate women and show how special they were. And you see Jesus women and the way that he special. treasured them. Women are not special and those verses don't exist. And oh my God, I can't. So, I mean, there's so many scriptures that bring women and elevate them and how special they are. No, there, there's not one scripture that elevate women. That come from a beta male. Beta! Beta! So, no such thing as elevating women. That come from weak men who are afraid of women. What you say with I Proverbs want, 31, calling them a wife of noble character, she is worth far more than rubies. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Praising a woman is elevating a woman. No, man, not like that. I feel like Jesse's just talking at this point. I think he's just saying, no, no, that's, that's, no. But I mean, like, Paul has a point, and instead of addressing it, he's just going to say, nah, th that's not what that meant. You, Why? It, let's say that you were a Christian, right? And you were truly okay. born of the Father, and you, <laughs> you're going to bring, you got to bring Morgan out of the hell that she's in, and she would be, the example of you and you would be the example of the father. But I got to ask Morgan this because she never did answer it. Did you go and forgive your mother, Morgan? Okay. Let me try to digest that whole section of weirdness. Paul brought up a good point. Jesse Lee Peterson completely dodged it. When he was asked to clarify, he said some nonsense about how women are inferior to men. 
and then brought it back to Morgan's relationship with her family, which is completely irrelevant, but sure. That's his debate style, by the way. If, I, if I'm presented with a good point, I'll either just be like, what, that's crazy, and then never actually give a response, and then move on with something even more irrelevant. And then your brain is just so like discombobulated by the weird mental gymnastics that someone would have to do to even get there that you just kind of like move on and because because you feel like your brain has been hit by a load of bricks it's, it, it's very very interesting discussing anything with this human you know we've had conversations of her just sharing her her mess ups and her apologizing to me saying you know I'm, i wasn't a perfect mother i'm sorry for things that i did that maybe hurt you and i forgave her did you forgive her for turning you away from your father she did not turn me away from my father <sighs> this pains me i just the amount of disrespect that he is exhibiting towards Morgan makes me very angry. I love my father. Did you forgive her for turning you away from your father? Nope. Why not? Because I, there was nothing to forgive. How, what is it like knowing you're just like her? <laughs> I want to punch him in the face. <laughs> What's it like knowing that? You can see that she's getting irritated I don't blame her and I am getting progressively more upset watching this man talk to her like that. <laughs> um, on, honestly, it's a blessing and an honor to know that I have so much of my mother in me and that the Lord is good and he can take the good from her and the bad from her and make it into a, a beautiful thing in me. Amazing. Amazing. See, I mean, this is what I'm saying. She's kind of giving him an answer that I don't think he deserves, but like I said, don't feel bad about that, Morgan. I did the same thing. This is very like eerily reminiscent of my conversation with him. Is it best to, to be like your mother or to be you? Uh, me. That's why I'm me. But <laughs> oh, I, I, li I like the snappy response. But you don't, you're not you if you're your mother. I have traits of my mom, but you, I'm very much me. Just like I have traits of my father, but I'm very much me. No, you're not you if you have traits of your mother. I mean, there, it, there's just no arguing with that. Like, just it's so stupid. It is so stupid. You can have things in common with someone. You can have traits that you've picked up from someone without being that exact person's replica. Like, I do, do we really need to explain this? I mean, but I feel like I keep going back to how this reminds me of my talk with him. So I'm gonna just show a few clips of that to, to show you guys exactly what I mean. Are you close to your earthly father? Yes. You are close. And, and were you close to him while growing up? I've always had a great relationship with my parents. Was he, and he believed in God? Both my parents are religious. And are they an example of people who believe in God? Are they a living example or just a wordy example? By your definition, you would say yes. They, they are really great people. My mom cares for both her elderly parents. My but dad what? actually sings Christian music. Like they're, <laughs> they're amazing people. But what's the real deal? But what's the real deal? There's gotta be something really messed up in there, right? Because you know, you're you and you're a woman, ew. And an atheist, which isn't even as bad as being a woman, mind you, but come on, what's the real deal? And yeah, I mean, I, I entertained him with answers that I don't think that he deserved. Keep in mind, this video was like over five years ago that I did this, but Still, I look back on it and I, I do cringe a little bit. I think I did good. I think I did good, but he didn't deserve as much of a response as I gave him. Because you're right, they can show me one thing, but being their child, you're behind closed doors with them. You see. Well, I mean, no thing. one's perfect, and I don't expect perfection from anyone. You don't. No, of Why course not? not. Because that's uh, that's unreasonable. And it is unreasonable. Nobody's going to be perfect. And this is kind of like what I was saying earlier when Paul was trying to say that even as a Christian you know, he has sin that he has to repent for because this is not, no one's perfect. I mean, Jesse Lee Peterson thinks that he has no error ever in anything that he does, but most people will acknowledge that that's not, as I said, it's not reasonable. Well, you can hope for perfection, but to expect it is something totally different. Am I hearing you say that behind closed doors, your parents were not a living example of people who believed in God? I think they were better than most people who claim to believe in God. But were they a living example? I'm not sure what you're trying you? to say. I mean, I clearly was getting a little irritated because I, listen, like I didn't, like I said, I didn't know anything about Jesse really before going on to this interview. I knew he was religious and he had a talk show, but I didn't know that he would do this like weird sort of personal probing that he likes to do. Regardless, you can see me getting irritated, just kind of trying to shut it down. Like, 
Not sure what you're getting at, buddy. So when your mother would get on your nerves as a kid, you didn't think that was bad? What do you mean? When she would irritate you, cause oh, you to make me clean angry. my room. When she would cause <laughs> you to come become angry, did you think that was good or bad at the time? When I was a kid, I didn't want to clean my room. So my tactic in this was I just, I kept answering his questions. Like you could, you could tell, I mean, it was all over my face that I thought this was the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. So my tactic in that was to just politely answer his questions in a way that did not give him the answer that he so desperately wanted. And eventually he just got tired of asking. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for you guys to meet my experts, but they say we can't have them all on camera at the same time. Too many faces. <laughs> Can they see you if you got on camera, Chris? I, I don't think they'll be able to see me. Oh, goody. So this is the part of the video where he like brings in his weird experts and the way that they enter this video is just so friggin' awkward and hilarious. I want you guys to meet my in, into, uh, my uh, experts yeah. at some point. They are amazing. Very good. They are not afraid of women. Not afraid of women, the spooky, spooky women. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that the experts are here to save the day. Come on in, guys. This is Hake of the Hake Report. He white. He white. Really? <laughs> what? And then this is Nick, hey. better known as the Anchor Baby, my there producer. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, you saw his face? Yeah, but yep. I went in front of your camera. <laughs> yes, Jesse, they saw him. He was literally on your camera. They, that, it's fine. And then Chris, uh, uh, get in there. I'm the, you I'm white. the, I'm the handsome one with the, I think I had a mustache at the time. I'd shaved it recently. Ah, yes, yep. yes. Oh, I remember you. Yep. I'm the handsome one. Oh my God. Wow. You, you know what? He's right. Man of my dreams, David, you got some competition over here. Woo! The hotness, I can't take it. Someone hold me back. What the? And again, of course, you know, Jesse had to, to insert, he white. I, I don't know, I don't know. Paul, do you <laughs> love white people? <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes, I do. How about you, Mark? We Martin? love all people. We love all the people. Do you love white people? I love all the people. Do you love white people? All the people. <laughs> How about white people? Yup, them too. Genuinely, this is this shit is so funny. She's doing so good. She's just like, uh, just I'm gonna keep repeating myself. All the people. <laughs> Why was it hard to say yes? I love white people. Um, I think it's strange that you're asking just for me to specify. Why not? Do you love people? I think that was the perfect response because he's trying to get her in, in some kind of corner of being like a, a self-hating white person and trying to make some kind of point that she's like a liberal crazy libtard that does this kind of, I, I've seen him with this type of rhetoric before. So I kind of know where he's going with it. And I, I think that the response is beautiful, just saying, like, I think it's strange that you're asking. Because I wanted to know about white people. Okay, well, yes, I love white people. They're great. Okay, my experts are here. Do you guys have questions for my experts? <laughs> and, just, and just cut to the next topic. Just, there's just no, no sanity to any of it. It's fine. Oh, I got a quick question. Okay. Um, just because we were curious discussing this in our video from a week and a half ago about you guys. Is anyone on the panel married? I would be so shocked if any of them said yes. Uh, just pure shock. No. no. Nope. Okay. And why did you ask kinda, that? That's right. kind of what we figured. Right. Well, we, I was going to... I was Paul being like, okay. Like, it's just, to me, that's funny. Because they, they knew it. They knew it. Nobody this disrespectful could get a woman. And it's hilarious. And it's a burn. I'm going to ask, like, if, <laughs> if any of you guys were married, how does your wife um, kind of respond or what does she think about the conversations you guys have? It wouldn't go over well. I'm just telling you that right now. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's a woman out there in the ether somewhere. Somebody somewhere that wants to be hated by their husband and they enjoy that type of dynamic. Maybe they'll find each other and live happily ever miserable. I don't know. Yes, people think that uh, it's some kind of, especially in the comment section, mm -hmm. they think it's some kind of weapon they use against us. <laughs> like, aha! 
they're not married. <laughs> right, right. You see, and or that I something mean, happened to us. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's not uh, really a big deal. To it's not a big deal, man. Like we don't even really like. It just we're not bothered by it. It's fine. Like we. Just, we don't care. I like how they try to play it down as though it's like people think that it's like a aha. They're getting us when they say that. But I mean, you are. There is something to knowing about marriage by having been married, by being in a relationship with someone and then having to work through things and understanding that dynamic. Like you, you can't downplay or deny flat out that if you're gonna talk about marriage, you know, maybe have someone in the mix, at least one of you. That's, I know this is crazy, but that, that's married. <laughs> would, would you guys like to be married? Yes. Yes. If it happens, maybe. Best of luck. I get that right. side of we it, but I, I, we, still, I still think you guys uh, are going too far. <laughs> I mean, do, do you guys feel like, um, and you probably do, but that if Jesus were walking in the flesh, he would join you guys in your conversation and he would fit right in? Yes. Be Without a doubt. Of I mean, yeah, of course they do. Like, I'm, I'm not surprised they gave this answer because they basically kind of... To a degree, they're equating themselves with God. They're saying they're infallible, that as soon as they became Christian or they were saved or whatever, they could not be sinful. They just, they, they could not anymore. He surprised his disciples by talking to the woman at the well, by drinking water from her. Do and when guys... he saw the woman at the well, he told the other people, stop judging this slut. <laughs> Go slut and slut no more. So oh true. boy. <laughs> Is he wrong? Slut. Am I wrong by that? Paul. Paul tries to give an example in the Bible where, you know, Jesus would not equate himself with these men or, or align with their misogynistic beliefs and to prove that they are in fact not misogynistic. Jesse Lee Peterson basically says, slut, 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 slut. Good point, Jesse. I, you know, you, you convinced me you're no longer misogynistic. <laughs> the Bible is the word from God, but the word of God is written in our hearts. It's made flesh. It's within us. So this is really interesting. They get into a discussion about pretty much the validity of the Bible and how much you should even have to read it or take it seriously as a Christian. And it, it gets very interesting to me. It's so you don't, think it's, you don't think it's beneficial or important for Christians to read the Bible? You can read if you want, but not to remember. I thought this was a Christian talk show. <laughs> so like, even me as an atheist, clearly, you know, I don't believe in the Bible, but I do believe if you're a Christian, you should, like, you know, believe in the Bible because where else are you getting your Christianity from? You, you, know, you not to remember, let it go in and out because Satan will interpret it for you in your head and you think that that's from God. He's very contradictory in this statement because he's saying Satan will interpret the Bible in your head if you read it. So don't read the Bible, just trust your heart. He's saying that the error could come from Satan in reading the Bible because then Satan could warp it in your interpretation. But if you just pretend to know it within yourself, it's in your heart, it's already in your head, you just make it up pretty much as you go along, that's not influenced by Satan, that's God. Right, so, so basically whatever I come up with on my own, and to me this is a very dangerous way of thinking, whatever I come up with on my own is the word of God. I have the authority of God behind every action that I take, every word that I speak. That type of mentality can be very, very dangerous. And it's just interesting to me that he can say, interpreting the Bible leaves room for Satan, but just making stuff up as you go along from what you think in your heart that can't be warped in any way. It's just very, very mind-boggling and hypocritical. I mean, it is useful. It's not, but it's not, it doesn't say that it's the, that never calls itself the word of God. The Bible? Yeah, the Bible never calls itself the word of God. When I was Catholic, they would do a reading and they'd be like, the word of the Lord. And we'd all be like, thanks be to God. And it was the Bible. So, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but when God speaks, that's the word of God. And he said that he would write his law in our hearts. 
I, I, I can't. Like this just, it makes no sense to me and I'm not going to pain myself by trying to understand this very crazy way of thinking anymore. I can't, it's so logical. Even from my previous Christian perspective and understanding of things like this just flat out does not make any sense. Moving on. You are not trusting God in you. But as soon as you start trusting yourself, not trusting yourself, you're saying yourself, man. Says, what this the, is you're the, just okay. The what God, God inside of you that can so easily get led astray. Thank you, Paul. Paul, does the Bible more. say that the Bible is the Word of God? In the beginning was the Word. The no. Word was with God, and the Word was God. But does the Bible say that the Bible is the Word of God? That is the you Bible. You can phrase it however you want, but I'm just quoting scripture. But I'm asking a question. I'm black and I'm slow, so I'm asking a question. I'm black and I'm slow. I don't. Why, why pair those two things? No, you're not. <laughs> I'm not what? You're not slow. <laughs> yes, but you are black. <laughs> I'm black at the East of Spain. I think Morgan had the same initial feeling as me with that. Like, why are you pairing those things together as though obviously one leads to the other? That does feel very racist um, and just flat out a horrible thing to say. Um, but I do agree. I think he might be a little slow. I'm just going to say that. No, I'm genuinely like I'm concerned for this perspective. What if suddenly a year from now you look and you see... Like I'm living this way and then you open up the Bible and the way you're living is very much different from the way Jesus told you to live. Would that concern you? Those who believe in the Father don't do what if. When you have faith, you don't do what if. He just, he just lives with this absolute idea that he can do no wrong ever. It's very scary. This is, this is just like throughout history, people who think like this cause a lot of damage. I think I hear my baby crying. It's a whimper. It's just a whimper, but he's waking up. Hold on. Okay. All right, and I'm back. Do you want to say hi? You just woke up. You sleepy pants. Let me do this because I got to end this. Uh, yeah. Morgan, are women equal to men? They are equal to men in God's eyes, but they have different roles. Good Morgan, answer. Morgan, are women equal to men? Yep. Oh, good God. How many times is he going to ask the same question? Did the woman come from the man or from God? Came from the man. So how can she be equal then? Through God. What the? There it is again. What the? What the? Paul, are women equal to men? Uh, yeah, yeah, women are equal to men. How is God that? God created man and that? woman in his image, so I'd say we're pretty equal. He didn't create the woman in his image. He, yes, he, he did. He created the woman in the man's image. Right, but if, if he was created in God's image and she was created in his image, it's very interesting that I'm even debating this. It's, I don't believe in any of it, but, but, you know, technically, according to what they believe, that would make sense, right? Am I losing it? What? No. By saying you guys don't let, hold the Bible in, in. in high esteem, hold on, you hold are on. admitting that we're on very different playing fields. Because when we go to scripture to Paul. say God created man and woman in his image, you guys are saying, uh, some of the Bible, you can take it, you can leave it. We don't read it that much. Ooh, Paul's getting mad. He's getting mad and it's about to get even more intense. The Bible says no, 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 that man that and hey, woman. Come back, come back, come man back. Man and woman. No, that's not what I'm I asked. I'm taking the Bible's word over your word, no, Jesse. No, but you didn't answer my question. putting words in the Bible's mouth. What? Paul and Morgan are going to go with the Bible over Jesse Lee Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson seems like so much more fun. No, we are not. This is what Scripture Genesis, says. Uh, Genesis 127. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, some he created them. That's what Scripture That's says. some translations. So did the man come... Those are some translations. Did the woman yeah. come from the man? <laughs> Oh, they're going to pull up. It was a, just that's how it's translated in your version argument. But what's interesting is the same argument could be reversed, and they seem pretty uh, hellbent on their interpretation. In does the Bible say they're equal? Men and, men, or men and women are equal? Where does it say that they're not? It doesn't even raise the issue because equality is a fake idea. Are we near the end of this? I just, I really like. There's only so much stupid someone can take at once. Like, I don't know how Paul and Morgan sat through this. I'm having a hard time watching it. The woman is suffering without the man. <laughs> the man suffers Morgan. without the woman. <laughs> no, the man suffers as a result of the woman. <laughs> oh, yes. It's all women's fault. 
Now you're getting it, Morgan. It's all us. We're just the worst of everything, you know. <laughs> Even though we believe very differently with things, it doesn't matter. We're both women. We're both we're both going straight to hell. <laughs> so let me ask Morgan, and then I gotta go. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Paul, do women have love? What a weird question. <laughs> yeah. Did you film with them? Yeah, a little bit. Oh. I'm still filming. Hi everyone. How was the babe? Good. He's pretty cool. Love you. Oh, I can't say that. Say what? That I love you. Morgan, do women have love? Yes. And where do they get the love from? From the Lord. How do they get it from God when they're not of God? <laughs> oh, is this a thing? <laughs> women aren't capable of love. <laughs> That's because you guys got educated. That's what happens. Oh. <laughs> and women don't love their fathers. Yes, they do. They that's yearn for their absurd, father, but they don't love their father. That is an absurd <laughs> saying. That, no, where do you truth. come with that? All women hate all men. <laughs> You're getting into your inflammatory so statements crazy. again. No, it's true. Oh, God. I, this is just, this is getting too painful to watch. This, how, does he, how does he say stuff like this? And, and really believe it. And I'm not even gonna ask you guys the question I normally ask, like, do you think he really believes it or do you think he's just saying it for just entertainment purposes? I fully stand by saying that I think he believes all this shit. He totally does, which is disturbing. But then you take it a step further by saying, no women love this. Everything a woman touches turns women to hell. Women don't have to love, me, it, make, it no longer makes you guys reputable. Where do women get their love from? It no longer it where is the proof or, that women have it no love? longer makes you guys reputable when you prove, make such inflammatory statements. Where is the proof like that? that women and have I would love? not encourage I would not encourage our Christian audience to come listen to you guys because you take it so far. It Where is the proof that women have love? Oh my goodness. Get it, Paul. For him to say that he would not suggest that his Christian audience watch Jesse Lee Peterson, I feel like is a big very bold but but really that it's impressive and it's a big statement that he's making that he has reached this point in the conversation which i am sure is full of many 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 frustrations where he's just straight up having to be like i i just i can't i can't endorse this person and i actually am going to advocate for people to not give this man the time of day because he's just not good it's not healthy to hear these things where is your proof that women do not have love that all look at women the world do around not have you. love look at Where's the family your proof that every woman in the whole planet earth hates <laughs> men and their fathers and it's crazy look around it's you crazy just look around you just i mean there's not like there's any evidence of women loving their fathers or their husbands or their son or any man in their life friend family i mean stranger it doesn't matter there's no examples of women loving men every woman just 100 percent hates men and that's what he thinks <laughs> last question i think paul is there such thing as racism yes is there such th yes and why do you say yes because this world is a fallen world and we have crappy people that live on this earth. <laughs> yeah, true. There are crappy people that live on this earth. That's a, uh, honestly, that's probably the same answer I would have given. Minus the fallen, whatever. You, same thing. Did God, say, not, did God say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principality and wickedness? Yes. Yep. Well, where does racism come from? I would say that would be a subcategory of wickedness. Where is he getting at? God never mentioned racism. He mentioned wickedness. Why yeah. do you call it racism as a Christian when you know it's a battle between good and evil? I mean, there are different things that you could do that are good and things that you can do that are bad. It is good to help someone in need. It is bad to kick that person in the face. You know, maybe it doesn't specifically outline Face kicking in the Bible, but you know, you can just kind of infer that racism is bad, you know? What do you think? Don't you think I'm very kind? Um, when I say women are soft -spoken. wicked. Soft-spoken. <laughs> when I say women are evil. Is that nice? Yeah, that's so kind. <laughs> Don't you think I'm very kind, Morgan? Um, <laughs> Paul, do you have anger? Hey, hey, I know you guys said you got a roll. I'm actually heading out as well. Get, um, just answer yes or no real fast for that. Do you have anger? <laughs> He is the least angry person uh, hold on, I've Mari, ever met Mama, in my Mama, life. hold on, Mama. Okay. Paul, do you have... Do you, oh, the disrespect, I just... Oof. Do you have <laughs> anger? Hey, Jesse, we got to roll, man. We got to roll. We've, we've gone over time a half hour. Morgan, do you have anger? Uh, yep. And <laughs> She's like, yeah, I got anger towards you right now, buddy. You, Morgan, just, said, you just said last question. Morgan. I don't care to go down this path. I don't.
Martin, I don't at all, Paul but I really Anthony. have to go. I really have to go. Can Morgan, we at least can, Morgan, can we end on a good note, though? Yes. Can we end on a good note? Morgan, can we end on a good note? Answer. Didn't he just say that women should have no authority over a man, like completely submissive? And he's like, "Well, Morgan, can you make him do this for me?" Like, little bit of hypocrisy there, dude. Well, can, can this be the last, the absolute last question? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, do I have anger? Sometimes anger wells up in me. Sometimes it's a righteous anger. Sometimes it's a fleshly anger that I have to repent for. So do you have anger? He just answered it. He just answered it. And I think that the, the answer is yes. And it is very much welling up inside of him right now. That is what I was saying. Yeah, you know, gotta have the woman to put the men in place sometimes, Jesse. <laughs> beta! Beta! And that's, I gotta, I got oh. That was pretty much the end of it. I, I literally sat through the entire thing and edited through the whole thing. And oh my God, it was way too much. But I feel this amount of frustration just watching. I cannot even imagine how the two of them must feel. Props. They were fiery. They stood up for themselves, held their ground. Paul defended Morgan whenever Jesse was being disrespectful. Morgan stood up for herself. She made a lot of good points. She was sassy and funny. And I am surprised at how in the same camp of Paul and Morgan I'm finding myself. What world is it? I kind of remember feeling a very similar sense of confusion whenever there was the debate between Jesse Lee Peterson and Ray Comfort. And I was standing Ray Comfort in that video. I was like, you know what? He's got some good points. He was being really respectful towards his wife, saying how smart she was and how amazing she was and just amazing. And debating Jesse Lee Peterson on the whole like women are terrible thing. And I remember thinking like, wow, this is weird. I'm like siding with Ray Comfort, alternate universe. But a lot of you guys felt the same way. Fuck me, I never thought I'd be rooting for Paul and Morgan, but here we are. I give props to Paul and Morgan for being brave and having that interview. The fact that Jesse makes Paul and Morgan sound somewhat reasonable really tells you what an absolute nut he is. I can't believe I'm rooting for Paul and Morgan. I actually think they're one of the better people to debate Jesse because it brings out the inconsistency of religion and interpretations of the Bible. People are giving respect to Paul saying that he doesn't want people disrespecting his wife and I'm proud of him to be honest because he isn't the kind of man I pictured him to be. Beautiful. I I'm glad. I'm glad opinions are changing. Mine certainly has. My goodness, this is a long video. I am sorry. I just, I had a lot to say and I didn't want to skip through it even though a lot of it was like focused on the Bible and stuff that I could have just kind of moved over to talk about just the women's stuff, but I don't know. I thought all of it was very interesting and I like how heated Paul and Morgan were willing to get to stand their ground and defend each other. And I just, you know, having had my own conversations with Jesse Lee Peterson, I have a, a an empathy for, for what they went through. And it is, it is hard. And I'm sure, especially for them as, as Christians, probably even harder because, you know, it's someone in your own camp, although now I would say they probably don't feel that way about him. But I do think it is healthy that they were willing to have that conversation. I think it's good for, you know, people who watch their videos to see this side of them, to understand, you know, where they fall on the spectrum of Christians because apparently it's a lot wider than you thought. But anyway, as I did in my last video, I will leave a link in the description to all the relevant videos talked about in this video, uh, to the one where they actually reacted to this and gave more of their thoughts and feelings on it and to my original debate with Jesse and to all of the things, even my previous video, I will link to all of them in the description below. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like this video if you liked it. I mean, seriously, likes do help a lot and this was a long one to make. I put a lot of work into it. And on that, I do appreciate everybody who supports me over on Patreon because a lot of my videos get demonetized and if they are, it, it's not like high paying ads because I'm controversial. It makes me want to cry. But thank you for supporting me. Uh, also, you can check out my merch store, ffvmerch.com. And if you want even more than all of those things, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to my family vlog channel. I'm working really hard on that channel. So if you want, you can search Frank Family Vlogs or go to youtube.com slash Jacqueline Vlogs. You saw my, my lovely husband who I love, you know, even though he's a man and I'm a woman, I have love for him. Baby, who's a boy, I have love for him too. You'll see a lot more of those guys on the vlog channel. So check it out. And yeah, I'll just, I'll end on a final uh, props to Paul and Morgan for, 
for being willing to do this. I am very pleasantly surprised. I didn't think they were going to do it at all, but uh, they did, and I think they did a really great job. And I am excited to hopefully hang out with you guys in Nashville in the near future. All right, maybe we'll even collab on a video. Who knows what's going to happen? You never know at this point. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Psh. Honey, you're interrupting me. Yeah. You got something to say? Let's show everybody how cute you are. This is my kitty cat. Yeah, see, I do believe in angels. Hi. Do we need some kitty ASMR? You're so cute. Yes, you are.